Right now, trouble in Romney land. He's trailing in the polls, and he's even getting grief from his own party. Can he pull a rabbit out, though? Is it time that mid here makes a move, or could it already be over? Meanwhile, president facing some criticism of his own for deciding to meet with the leaders of the, I should say the ladies of The View instead of some of the leaders of the free world and especially blowing up BB Netanyahu. Will it help or hurt the campaign? We shall discuss. Plus, we're going to sit down with the dean of New York's congressional delegation, Charlie Rangel, find out why he calls Mitt Romney a bad actor in a B-level movie, as well as answering some of the tough questions that he's had from his recent past. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. We're going to get into those stories and a lot more this hour, including a controversial decision uh, that parents and many New Yorkers are sounding off on at the high school level. All right. It is September 24th here, and we're just 20, 42 days away from Election Day. And President Obama, he's up by about three points, maybe a little bit more, but between three and four points. Romney's also behind, though, and more importantly, just about every swing state here. We'll get into some of the electoral math. But in Romney land, up is down, down up, and he thinks everything's just A-OK. -okay. Can you win this thing? I've got to win this thing. You're the CEO of this campaign. A lot of Republicans would like to know, a lot of your donors would like to know, how do you turn this thing around? Well, it doesn't need a turnaround. we got a campaign which is tied with an incumbent president of the United States. Don't need to turn it around. That comment here has gotten more than a few folks a little kerfuffled, as Andrew would say. But as we talked about, the latest number is not nearly as kind to the Romney campaign as the nominee is. So... Does Romney need a turnaround? Well, for the numbers, let's bring in the aforementioned Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Well, I'll tell you what, Rich, if you're a Mitt Romney fan, this next segment is going to feel a little like checking out your baseball team's box score the morning after a 10-run loss. The headline stat, in the 19 presidential elections held since 1936, only two candidates have lost when trailing in the polls 45 days from the election. Governor Tom Dewey from New York in 1948, and Al Gore in 2000. And Gore, you'll remember, won the popular vote but lost the electoral vote and the election. Earlier, we showed you President Obama's lead with just 42 days left. And in today's big new poll out from Politico and George Washington University, not only is President Obama leading, he's also reached the critical 50% plateau. Worse still for Team Romney, there's been a change in the standing of a critical swing state over the weekend. Of the six most important, North Carolina here flipped from red to blue in the poll averages. Obama now up one in the Tar Heel state. He leads in every other state listed here by even more. And the Politico poll making clear the divide among Republican voters and the unity among Democrats. Asked whether they were supporting their candidate or opposing the other guy, only 47% of Romney supporters said their vote was for Mitt. 42% are voting against Obama. But among Obama supporters, 75% are backing the president directly. Only 19% made up their mind to keep Romney from the White House. So where can Romney make up ground? Turns out most of the issues Republicans thought would be reason to vote Romney are moving the other way. Asked who's better on the economy, Obama up one. Better on foreign policy, Obama up nine. Better on taxes, Obama up four. Better on Medicare, Obama by nine. And the one glimpse of hope for Romney asked who's better on jobs. Both men are tied at 48. One final stat and hints that the race may soon be a fait accompli. That is, the perception may become the reality. Asked who they think will win, regardless of who they support. Voters said Obama by a two-to-one margin, 60% to 30%. Rich. All right, Andrew, thank you. Let's bring in the panel on this. Former congressman from Connecticut, one of our favorites, Rob Simmons, political journalist and author Dominic Carter, and Andrew's with us as well. And congressman, I'll start with you. Yes, there's time left. Yes, there's a lot of money that's going to be spent. We'll talk about the debates and their importance in a little bit. But I'll ask you the same question those respondents said. If the election were today, who wins? Well, if the election was today, it probably would be Obama. But here's the good news. The election isn't today. <laughs> the election is in November, and this is September. And it reminds me of 1980, uh, when Ronald Reagan, uh, in the words of Charlie Rangel, a bad uh, B-level actor, bedtime for Bonzo, mm -hmm. was running behind Jimmy Carter. But, you know, what happened with uh, that race? 
Uh, the debates were critically important, the advertisements were critically important, and as we got closer and closer to November, the B-level uh, bedtime but for Bonzo and Kinger pulled it off. If I could take, us, if I could take <laughs> us back a few years into a debate not that removed from that, when Lloyd Benson turned to Dan Quill and says, you know Jack Kennedy? Well, many people say Mitt Romney ain't no Ronald Reagan here, and in the debates, he's going to have to have more than a little level of charisma to close this gap. Nobody sees that coming. Important difference. That was vice presidents. The vice president debate doesn't really matter when it comes to the presidential campaign. The but, vice but president will, wins or loses based on how the president But I does. will point out, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of those numbers, 45 days from the election in 1980, Ronald Reagan was ahead. It was a small lead and it expanded, but he was ahead in the polls. Yes, but a lot of these numbers are within the margin of error. And so I would argue at a time of, of incredible communications dynamics, even more so than what you had in 1980, uh, we are miles away from this election. Okay, L let's say, and we are, because we want you to watch for the next 40 some odd <laughs> days as well, right. so I I'll grant the Congressman that, but Dominic, when I ask how much trouble um, Mitt Romney's in, I ask it from the following perspectives. Forget that this, the only constant has been that this campaign has either been a step slow or out of touch. More than that, Andrew went through almost every path to 270, the magic number for electoral votes with all the swing states. You can't find one. Nobody wins if you don't win Ohio, and he's way back there, Florida, we can go through that. On top of that, the legitimate question is, if anything, I think he's got to be worried more about his base. Look at the headlines for the last few days. Today, Republicans want him to let Ryan off the leash and let him go. Um, Republicans taking shots at Romney because they're worried about down ticket. Um, I don't see Republicans rallying around the candidate to do whatever they can. I still haven't met other than his family, the one person who loves Mitt Romney. Ron Reagan might have had problems, but he had a core group here that believed in the great communicator. Um, so my question is, how much trouble is he in right now, Mitt Romney? You already know the answer. Romney is saying to his supporters, congressmen, He's a great man. But Romney's saying, show me some love. Where's the love? It's just not working. And that window, of, and I've tried to be optimistic as it relates to your candidate, but that window of opportunity is just closing, Richard, because let's look at this for one second. Let's look at this, uh, Congressman and Richard and Andrew. Okay, the, I, you got a few chances left. One big debate performance. Obama's good. You know he's going to be ready for that debate. And he has a personality. And most people like him more than they like Romney. Okay, Obama could make a huge mistake. I don't think so. The Chicago machine is well greased. And that's not going to happen. The clock is winding down. It's not looking good. Well, Andrew, that brings me to those debates. We got four debates left here. <clears throat> and obviously we got three presidential and one VP. Um, in the spring, we heard Romney. He's going to rebound after primaries didn't happen here. In the summer, there's those key conventions. Get a big, a big bounce after Tampa, where you and the congressman uh, covered that as well. We got the debates left, but the real question is, historically and practically, how much of a rebound can he make here? And, and I guess it's the expectation game. They're not too high for him. I guess that's a one positive going into the first one. Yeah, Richa, and like so many of those highlights that you ticked off from the calendar, the debates are going to be here before we, we know it. We're just nine days now from the first meeting of Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. October 3rd, the candidates talk domestic policy. That may be the big one because if this is still separation between the candidates after that first debate, who knows what the impact of the other ones will be. October 11th, Biden versus Ryan in the VP debate. The 16th is the town hall at Hofstra. 22nd, the president's, uh, presidential candidates talk foreign policy. But even a lopsided Romney win doesn't necessarily guarantee uh, an advantage for Mitt Romney. When asked about the importance of the debates, 23% in today's Politico George Washington poll said they're extremely or very important. 38% said somewhat or little. And 38% called them not important at all. But to that point, I did see a number that blew me away. The amount of people that are going to watch some or all the debates blew records out of the table. 80-some-odd percent said so they're going to watch some and, or all. And, and that will only help Mitt Romney. And there's a reason for that, because there are a lot of undecideds, and undecideds not, usually, though, really. usually cut for the challenger, but, but not that, for the but incumbent. Though, the undecideds are a sliver right now. It's tiny as a percentage this late in the game. People have largely made up their minds. Now, they may change them if somebody really screws up at a debate or somebody hits it out of the park. What If you counsel Mitt Romney, you say, all right, Governor, as bad as it's been, you got a chance here. What do you tell him to do? 
Well, he said stay the course. I say stay the course on steroids. Stick to the basic message. Do not get distracted with some of these personal issues. The American people are suffering. Unemployment is high. Our foreign policy in the Middle East is, is in the toilet. Uh, and he just has to keep focusing on these fundamental basic saying, issues. I'll figure it out uh, when I get with Congress. It, at this point, should he throw in the kitchen sink and give the specifics, even if it's going to give a target for the other he side? Had, he, I have in my briefcase a 59-point plan that I came out a year ago. Yeah. You know yeah. how many people read a 59-point yeah. plan? 50, Nobody. 50, yeah. So yeah. he's now got a five-point <laughs> plan. He's got to stick to the five points. You know what, Rich? You mentioned the base and, and what Romney can do. If he can pick up some independent votes, if he can gain some ground and some traction. The base voted for him in the primaries because he was the most electable of the candidates. That's where he's lagging with the base right now. If they, if they get the sense that this guy could actually win this thing, the base will show up. The base will turn out. But they need a little encouragement. The best thing he can do is take uh, Paul Ryan off the leash, let him hit every conservative state there is to rally the base. And Romney, I agree with you, Congressman, keep it plain and simple. Americans are hurting, the economy is bad, and it's this guy's fault, Barack Obama. All right. I'm we take send a, quick a message to Romney. <laughs> Dominic has the strategy. Let's go get him. <laughs> if Mitt Romney's counting on Dominic, he's in trouble here. All right. We take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get into that criticism that Romney's been getting from his own party. Uh, we're going to talk about, as I said, if he's going to get the base together, he's still going to get the party behind him. We'll tell you what they're saying here, and I'm going to hear what the Congress has got to say to those folks who are jumping ship. Stay with us. I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> 